but this way of life would soon change. From the time of Columbus to the 1600s, when La Salle claimed the Mississippi River Basin for King Louis XIV, naming it Louisiana, and old world powers began imposing their rivalries on the landscape of the New World. By 1700, Louisiana was a royal French colony. In 1714, a fort was built at Natchitoches, which would become the first permanent European settlement in the Louisiana Territory west of the Mississippi. In 1718, New Orleans. And in 1756, the Poste des Attaquapas, a French trading post, is established on the banks of the Teche. In 1762, the world was changing. The Louisiana Territory west of the Mississippi was turned over to Spain. British colonists would soon begin their push for independence and the Acadians of Nova Scotia, after years of exile, would find their way to Louisiana during a time of great transition. The Acadians were originally French colonists who had lived in Eastern Canada, or Lacadie, for more than 100 years. Their inventive methods of agriculture had transformed marshland into farmland, a region Great Britain wanted more and more control over. In 1755, British soldiers drove them from their homes, forced them into ships, and sent them out to sea. Some were dispersed along the Atlantic seaboard, some were returned to France, others made their way to the Caribbean. Ten years later, a group of Acadian families, led by Joseph Beausoleil Broussard, joined together, along with other groups such as Canary Islanders. They were welcomed into Louisiana by a Spanish government eager to increase the number of Roman Catholic colonists. But where would the Acadians go? How could they begin a new life? Along the Teche, the Acadians found refuge. These fertile lands, like many others, the Oliviers thought the indigo trade would create wealth and security. But year after year, the crop failed. Yet the Oliviers remained in Louisiana, turning to cotton as a cash crop building a stately home along the bayou with cypress harvested from the land and bricks fashioned by slaves from the clay bottom of the bayou teche. In 1836, Charles Olivier du Clousel moved into the raised Creole cottage along with his wife Marie Amarinth. Sadly, only three of the couple's seven children would live into adulthood. Despite the hardships of a frontier life, the Oliviers and their Acadian neighbors persevered. In the mid-1800s, the Oliviers became sugar planters. All the seasons of the year, their slaves were occupied with planting, nurturing, and harvest. The rich lands along the Teche continued to reward the efforts of the French-speaking people who lived here. 